getting that point, huh? Spain, you're ready? Okay, good evening. I'm going to call the plan commission meeting to order Tuesday, February 4th, 2020 at 6 o'clock p.m. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. And roll call. Commissioner Graff? Here. Commissioner Oliver? Here. Alderman Kubaki? Mayor Chevrati? Here. Commissioner Jox? Here. Commissioner Buckmaster? Here. Commissioner Bartlett? Here. Planner Chesbutowski? Here. Thank you. Uh, statement of public notice? The agenda was posted and distributed to all news media requesting notification in accordance with the open meeting laws on Friday, January 31st. Okay, and I'd be looking for a motion to approve the December 3rd, 2019 minutes. So moved. Second. Any discussion on those minutes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes are approved. Uh, we have new business for consideration. Resolution PC 001-2020, approval of a metal accessory structure for Daniel Lentz located on Ryan Drive. Second. Thank you, and Adam? Thank you, Mayor. Um, this proposal is for a 20 foot by 30 foot accessory building, uh, totaling 600 square feet in size, on a one and a half acre lot located, uh, excuse me, on Ryan Drive. Um, the proposal is in front of you because, as you know, anytime there's a outbuilding that doesn't have same or similar materials and colors as the home, it has to have plan commission review. In this scenario, they're looking at uh, metal roofing and metal walls, um, which aren't the same as the house. They are, though, matching house colors and complementing house colors. As well as part of the proposal, they are having um, some decorative features, which is typically things the plan commission is like to see. Things like wainscoting um, that will complement color. They're also going to have some decorative features, um, like decorative doors and some coach lights and stuff. You'll see the plans in your packet and on the screens ahead of you, some windows. So they're giving it a lot more of a residential character rather than agricultural or business, which is what the plan commission has historically been concerned with. Um, all of the other setbacks, offsets, and zoning requirements do meet uh, the requirements of the zoning district. So as such, staff is recommending approval, finding no undue harm to the surrounding area, given the distance to the roadway and the area being fairly rural in character. Thank you, Adam. Any questions? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It is approved. <coughs> then we have resolution PC2-2020. Approval of a three-lot certified survey map for Tim Dillett, located on Durham Drive. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Thank you. And Adam? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this proposal was in front of you, um, I think it was about a year ago or so. It was, I think it was during last year. Um, this lot right now is currently like an L shape, and the original plan was to split two lots. The existing home and outbuilding were going to be on one lot off of Durham Drive, and the second lot was going to be one large lot off of McShane Drive. Um, as the owner of the property kind of started to put plans together, they kind of... Um, you know, realized that from a cost standpoint, it was more effective to look at splitting it into a third lot, which there is enough land mass and area and width to do. So the new proposal um, would, in theory, replace the old one. Um, same lot we're working with, the same lot on Durham would remain as is. There's just um, now the one large lot on Durham is being split into two. And those two lots, even though they're still a decent size, the smallest of those two is 1.4 acres off of Durham, and the larger is 1.6. They are, uh, they do have to, excuse me, extend sanitary sewer as part of this to all lots on the CSM, so all three, as well as the adjacent lot that's on the northeast corner of Durham and McShane. These lots are a little donut hole in our sewer system that aren't serviced, so as part of this, they have to service them at their own expense. Other than that, there's really nothing too unique here. Um, they have done a groundwater test. Uh, there will have to be fill placed on the lot to facilitate the groundwater separation. There is a draft grading plan that our engineering department has received. They do have to do further reviews on that. 
but the current plan in its draft form does ensure that water stays on the property and leaves it at the roadways and not onto adjacent properties through swales or berms. That will need further review as the project goes forward. This project will also need a developer's agreement with the city because of that power uh, public sewer extension. But staff's recommending approval, it meets all of the land division ordinance codes. Thank you. Are there any questions? <coughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It is approved. <clears throat> Resolution PC3 2020, approval of a building site and operation plan amendment for Blue Line Auto Wholesalers on Saturn Drive. Move to approve. Second. Thank you. And Adam. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> this project was also before you back in April of 2019 uh, for Blue Line Automotive uh, Sales and Service. They're located just across the street in the industrial park. Um, when they kind of originally received their site approvals from the plan commission they had very limited outdoor parking area just because they kind of thought that was what the business demand and need would be um, over the past uh, numerous months they've realized that their business is doing way better than they hoped which is i think a thing we like to always hear from our local businesses and because of that they've um, been selling more and have need to house more vehicles on the property um, so they started talking with staff over the past few months about getting uh, some additional parking approved on their site. So you'll see in your uh, packet that there is a site plan kind of showing what their, you know, where their space is and what kind of parking that they're looking at allocating out there. Um, basically what they're looking at, the main, the main difference or main change is really they want to add up to seven vehicles for display that would be parked in a lane parallel alongside the front edge of the pavement. So, you know, most of the parking stalls are perpendicular to the building. Those stalls would say as they always were allocated. And they're just looking at adding uh, approximately a six foot by 102 foot area that would be striped. The resolution would require it to be striped if this gets approved. Um, so the cars could be parked parallel along the roadway. Um, what we alerted the applicant was that per the zoning ordinance, it's very important for two-way travel to have at least 24 feet in width. So per their measurements, they have provided that, you know, from the back of the existing parking stalls to where they would stripe the six foot deep area for parking would be 24 foot six inches, which does keep open the minimum requirement our zoning ordinance allows. Now, the only thing that the planning commission may or may not want to talk about is the idea of normally we require nine to 10 feet of width for parking. Now, the idea behind that is typically like employee parking, customer parking, where people are driving their own cars in and out. Here, the only amount of space that's really left is approximately six feet. So the applicant is asking that they be allowed really only a six foot depth for striping. And what they would do is they wouldn't stripe every individual stall as we typically don't require auto sales to do that. We usually allow them to stripe the perimeter of where the cars will be kept. Um, which we there's been a handful of auto sites we've allowed that on. So what they're really asking for here is the planning commission to make the call of, are you okay with these seven additional sales stalls, which then will be with a defined width of six feet. Um, like I said, that is less than we normally would require for a typical parking stall, but this is a little bit different scenario. Um, you know, staff doesn't really have an opinion one way or the other. That's why we want the planning commission to really discuss it if they think that's enough space. You know, the positive would be that only the employees are moving these cars in and out. It's not like it's a customer pulling in, they're driving with sloppy. You know, the, the, at least the employees know what kind of space they have to work with. And they would be the ones responsible for making sure the car is kept within that striped area and that nothing's blocking that 24-foot drive aisle. So, um, you know, if the planning commission has any comments, concerns, discussion on that, this is, this is that chance. Any questions? So just to clarify that they're pump, they're parking the cars bumper to bumper, you know. Correct. Parallel mm -hmm. to it. Like I said, okay. the approval would be up to seven. Um, that's the max they'd be allowed in that space, that additional space. And that's in addition to the stalls already allowed. They're allowed a few stalls that are along the front of the building. So it'd be a rectangle, basically mm -hmm. a rectangle, and they can use it up to six to seven cars. Yeah, up to seven say. cars. And it's like I said, they're staying about 102 feet long mm -hmm. and uh, six feet in depth. Or width is probably a better term, right. six foot and width. Right. I, I think in the past we've looked at the impact and risk, and being as this is the industrial park, we've allowed, uh, maybe not to parking, but we, we've allowed similar uh, variations, you know, based on a customer only or on premise. So 
I don't have any issues with, you know, what, what's being proposed here. So, I have a curiosity. What is their frontage? Is it on the map that you show here? Is it just the basically a rectangle, or is it L shaped? The, their actual business is more of a square rectangle. Um, if you look in the drawing where it says blue line and just kind of pencil lines on the two sides of the okay. left of the B and right of the E, that's kind of their space. So they are kind of extending in front of other businesses. Now that's something that we, as long as they're maintaining the drive aisle width and no other business wants to use it, we don't really have a preference on that. Uh, I believe the owner is advised that he's talked to some of the neighbors, and if you want to come up on anything, you're welcome to. I believe he's talked to some of the neighbors. The landlord here um, takes a very hands-off approach, is the way I'll word it, so he, he doesn't care, and we know this from past dealings with him. It's basically whatever's the tenants work out amongst themselves, he's okay with. Um, and, and I've spoken to everyone to the right of me, um, actually the right on the screen, and they, they don't have a problem with any of the parking. Um, they just wanted to make sure that they could get their they customers in and out, right? Sure they can get their vehicles in, in the, the, the guy that owns the gym on the end. He was just concerned that his customers can get in and out, that we're not going to block it. He's seen that we don't block it, and he's fine with it. Okay. And, yeah, and just like any plan commission approval, if let's say they go ahead with this and just things don't work out as we all think, even including the owner, and if there are complaints that are validated, we'd have to revisit this, but we haven't heard any issues yet. So I don't expect to hear any, so. And we, we talked about this originally a year ago? Uh, April of 19 is when they April got approval for the stuff in front of the building. And we haven't had any negative no. history at all? No. Okay. I have a question <clears throat> for you. Um, I actually happen to notice, because I go down Racine Avenue every morning, that there are cars parked like that already. And I was wondering if it was from the gym or you. It's, some of it so is from my car. Some of it is from um, Miracle Method next door to me, because some of his employees will park there. This is like 6.15 in the morning, so. R right. And, and the problem what we had is some of the, there was some cars parked <laughs> on the far east end, if you see the on the map there, mm -hmm. that were leftover stuff from the landlord, from Jay, um, and spaces that he apparently had let other people use, and people <coughs> were using, there, I mean, there was a couple cars that had been there for, since we were there. Okay. Um, and actually, RJ and, and Bob, who have the towing, who's next, we've actually gone through um, the last week or two and kind of cleared out all the, there was like five, four or five abandoned dumpsters. So we got a hold of waste management and advanced disposal to come through and get the stuff. So we've actually been trying to clean it up to get things organized for, for us to operate our business along with Adam at Miracle Method because he has employee vehicles and trucks too. So we've been, over the last couple of months, we've been trying to clean it up a little bit because again, Jay is really not. It does look a lot. Better. Thank, so, you. thank you. Thank you. It looks <laughs> and, a lot. And the other problem, too, is I, I take care of the snow plowing over there. So with some of those cars, we had to move them around like that in order for us to, to keep that whole okay. front clear because prior to that, um, Jay hired a guy who would basically just make one path through the front and one path through the back. So we've been trying to, you know, keep it better for us. Okay. I was just trying to determine if the... Jim was really busy at 6.15 in well, the morning, he is, or yeah, you well, were already is, parking like that? Yeah, he so. is busy over there, too. So, okay. Um, and, and, again, we've had conversations um, with everybody there, and they have no problems with it. This site is a history of not having good site approvals, and because not every business needs a site approval. If they're not, like, selling something outside, we don't see whose spots right. are allocated to who. So this user here in the next item on the agenda actually is a neighbor trying to look to do something similar with identifying spots. We always encourage that because the more we can, since the owner does take such a hands-off approach, we kind of want to be a little more hands-on to work with the businesses, but to make sure it's not all crazy. Like we went through the back of the property and we were even impressed that the back of the property now is much better than I've seen it years of past. So that's a step in the right direction. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks. <coughs> so we take it, no other questions? <clears throat> okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is approved. And that brings us to resolution PC4 2020, approval of building site and operation plan amendment for Waldera Enterprises LLC on Saturn Drive. <coughs> store. Move to approve. I'll second. Thank you. Adam? 
Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so as I mentioned, this is actually a neighboring property in the same building. Um, they are a towing business, um, so towing and impound. Um, a lot of their vehicles that they have a need for, uh, as far as impound goes, um, are either kept in the back area of the building. Like I said, it's kind of right there. It's kind of an open, just open area. It's not striped. There are some dumpsters. There have been some abandoned vehicles and dumpsters that has been cleaned up, as they've mentioned. Um, that back area is much better than it has been, but they're looking at defining a certain area that they could um, keep impounded vehicles. You'll see in the supplement, um, they typically don't have more than 10 vehicles or so a month, and a lot of those are being rotated in and out, so as one or two might go, one or two might get you know, dropped off. Um, they're also allocating then <clears throat> some parking in the front for customers and employees. Um, there isn't a huge employee count here just because of the nature of the business, and a lot of times we were told that um, because there's inside storage, you know, door in the back, that they very well might drive their personal vehicle in the back um, to pull then out a tow truck or something to go do a run. They do have, though, like I said, those employee customers in front of a few stalls for the sake of that if they do have someone that's getting dropped off to pick up a car that was impounded or whatever, you know, that person has a place to stop for that short period of time. Um, but it's not like a heavy customer-driven business. Um, the narrative and their application states that their intention is to keep as much inside as they can, especially their vehicles, but the back does allocate an area for truck parking if needed and the potential overflow of impounded vehicles. So um, staff didn't see an issue with this. Like I said, it's similar to some of the other users, as you just kind of heard the last one in this area. Um, and, you know, the industrial park is, is a great spot to see these types of businesses locate. Thanks, Adam. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It is approved. Thank you, everyone. Um, it, miscellaneous, do you have anything? Yeah, so um, miscellaneous here. I'm just going to put my notes here. Um, so this is just kind of a cleanup thing. Um, during some past common council meetings, it was brought to the city's attention that our general design guide, which is a tool that's approved by the plan commission, you know, it's not a, a code or ordinance, but it pulls from a lot of codes and ordinances. And it, what it is meant to do is serve as kind of a more user-friendly document for people looking to develop in the city to utilize. Um, it's not meant, though, to take the place of the code. And what came to our attention was that this guide adopted in 2007 included a page that had a spreadsheet or table that identified all the zoning districts. Um, we found out that some of those districts were wrong because things have changed over the years, but um, we really didn't realize it was there. And so in talking to our attorney, he agreed that we need to clean that up. And um, his suggestion was removing it altogether from the guide because the design guide is not meant to serve as the code if somebody wants to know setbacks and offsets and heights and open space. They're not supposed to go to that document. They're supposed to go to our actual ordinance on the website as that's current you know, to the minute. So um, because this isn't a document that is um, you know, approved by an ordinance, our attorney was confident in just making the change upon just letting the plan commission know that we're going to just remove that page from the appendix that has the table. And just like everyone should be doing and just like we direct everyone else to do is when they want to know what these regulations are, we do have an official table they can reference as a separate document or they would go right to the ordinance directly. So just wanted to make everyone aware I that. I thought that table was only there as an appendix for the 2020 Conference of Planning Committee when we went through. It wasn't, in my <clears throat> opinion, meant to serve as a future. It was more as a point in time. And it probably like, accidentally got inserted in. Yeah, Could well, be, yeah. Okay. And we, we even realized there was a typo or two on that, so that even compounded recall, things. I didn't so. recall that that was part, yeah, because mm -hmm. that because we used a lot of tools uh, when we developed the plan, mm -hmm. and that was one. I don't think the intention was to ever have that in there reflecting what right. importance yeah. would, yeah. So. And that's why the attorney and I agreed, like, we'll just remove it and use the official sources yeah. in its place. Good. So okay. just want to make everyone aware of that. And then just one thing that's not on here, but this is a kind of a minor, just a policy thing. Um, with the elections coming up, um, April plan commission is election day. So, um, and I believe they need to use this room. So what we'll be doing at the staff level is looking at some possible other dates, maybe even a week early or a week later or something, just to see how those could pan out, um, especially because we don't have this space. Now, if it's a small agenda, we could maybe do it in another room, but, you know, other people might have commitments to the election. So that's something we'll be talking about, maybe exchanging some emails. Just wanted to give people a heads up that it's on our radar. Okay. okay, thanks. Okay. With that, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.